Hey, what's going on everybody? John here with Wiki Game Guides, showing off the South Park Stick of Truth character customization. Uh, there's three parts I would consider of the character customization in this game. Uh, right now I'm at the initial character creation screen before you even get into the game and start walking around. Um, and actually, it's, it's a good initial character creating system, but it doesn't have a ton of long-term effects because in the game, there are a ton of character customization things that you can do that kind of completely overwrite uh, the stuff that you do at the beginning of the game. But let's take a look at this anyway. Uh, you can choose your skin tone, and this actually affects uh, what color your parents are in game as well. So my first time I played through the game, I was just the average white boy. And then I chose um, for my second time the spray tan jersey nastiness. And then uh, my parents were actually that same color too. So I'm gonna choose that. Uh, there are uh, 40 different hairstyles that you can choose from at the very beginning. And each one you can kind of customize which color it is as well. These get covered up pretty quickly by the hats that you choose in game though. So, I mean, it's, it's a really good character creator tool. It's better than most that you see in most RPGs just because of the simplicity and the kind of fun of it um, and how good each character looks that you create. Like there's no crazy sliders that um, just make your character look insanely ugly. Uh, there are three different outfits to choose from and you can customize the primary and the secondary color on each one. There's 16 different uh, makeup styles, whether it's freckles or a black eye. Again, these are all customizable in-game as well. So whatever you choose now, you're not just permanently stuck with it. And 13 different glasses selections to choose from. And you can choose uh, the primary frame color or and then also the secondary lens color. Now, unfortunately, after playing a few minutes into the game, uh, South Park and Stick of Chooks makes the same mistake that so many other RPGs make, which is making you choose which class you're gonna be at the very beginning of the game without really giving you a whole lot of details of how that class plays. Now this choice is completely unreversible late in the game, and unfortunately I don't have a ton of information about how all these different classes play out because you have to play through a significant portion of the game and level up to unlock all the abilities that these classes have to really see how they play. My first time through the game I played as the fighter, um, which is a melee focused class um i it changes which which class you choose changes which uh starting items you have it kind of changes your initial aesthetics but again um that also can be customized with a lot of different items that you find throughout the game and like i said it also changes some of the abilities you have like uh the fighter his initial ability is um uh, a rochambeau attack where you do rock paper scissors and then kick him in the nuts and then he also has a uh uh, I forget what it's called, but it's like a home run ability where you uh, throw a ball up in the air, pitch it to yourself, and then hit him and uh, hit your opponent in the face with a baseball bat. Uh, and then the Jew uh, has a sling ability where he swings around a sock and then throws a rock at his enemies. And then uh, I'm, but I haven't played far enough in the game to unlock his fourth and fifth abilities yet. So I, and I haven't even touched the mage and the thief classes yet. So um, after I get some more time into this game, I will have more info on these other uh, classes. So they all seem pretty balanced, so I wouldn't stress it out too much. But it is unfortunate that they put so much emphasis on um, such an, an important decision without giving you more info in the game. And now for the late game customization, or at any time in the game actually, but at this point in the game, I have finished the main storyline and I'm just kind of wandering the world. Um, you can customize your character to look dramatically different than how they started at the game at any time with no expense, uh, just depending on whatever kind of items you find throughout the world. So you can customize the hair. Uh, you can choose, I mean, it, it, it's completely dependent on what you find or what you buy throughout the world. Uh, and the hair actually depends a lot on what helmet you have equipped. So I'm just going to unequip that so you can see the hair a little bit better. Um, get the little Asian top knot, 80 hero action wig, long hair. I mean, there's just hundreds of things to find and buy. Depending on, on how you want to customize your guy. Uh, lots of different eyeglasses to do. Actually, not as many eyeglasses as other uh, options. Let's go with the classy British monocle. Lots of makeup choices. 
these aren't as dependent on what headwear you're wearing, but some of them, like the pentagram tattoo, will get covered up if you have a, a large helmet on. Yeah, I'm starting to look like pink. Um, and then uh, quite a few facial hair choices as well. I don't have every single one unlocked. Um, I think my favorite one is the chin balls. <laughs> uh, that fucking cracks me up still. I'm a child. Anyway, um, there are also a lot of head and body armor and hand customization items. Um, now, these affect how your character performs in battle and how they look. Uh, so, and, and there's no like set bonuses. So if I wanted to go full crab people armor, my guy will look hilarious, but it's not necessarily better than uh, uh, the barbarian stuff that I was using previously. <laughs> or you can go full, uh, let's see, I was using a gimp suit before as well. Or the leather daddy vest. Oh, where is it, where is it? Leather armor, here we go. <laughs> I kind of like how that looks actually with the crab hands. But like I said, uh, what, um, what armor you choose affects how you perform in battle, so it's not always necessarily best to choose the one that you think is the funniest looking. But my favorite way to customize your character in game is by going to Tom's Rhinoplasty and, uh, and getting the Hasselhoff. This is, as far as I know right now, the only real face in the game. Um, and for 175 bucks, this is the best joke in the game. So this is a season one joke where Mr. Garrison goes to Tom's rhinoplasty where Stan's mom works to get uh, a new nose and he comes out looking completely different. <laughs> Which fucking cracks me up. Like, I played through most of the game. I, I played through most of the game with this David Hasselhoff face. Like, all the other videos that I've posted have the David Hasselhoff face. And a, a lot of different characters will have different interactions with you too after, uh, after getting the David Hasselhoff surgery. Now, unfortunately, when you have the Hasselhoff, uh, it completely neglects how the head helmet looks on him. I mean, it doesn't matter at all. You can just choose whichever one you want and completely neglects all facial customization, hair, eyewear, makeup, and facial hair. But it's a good trade-off having uh, the Hoff stare you down. Anyway, uh, thanks for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more South Park Stick of Truth videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Game on. Oh, I should also mention that if you want to undo the Hoff, you just choose your plain old face for a buck. And you go right back to where you were before. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom. Understand you're wanting some work done. Just have a seat right here. All right, just relax. This won't hurt a bit until I start, at which point it will hurt immensely. Here we go. Oh, that looks nice. Big improvement. Come back if you ever need any more work done. If you don't mind me saying, your nose is delightful.